Hi everyone, this is Allie and Hannah from the Carl Bookshop and we are here for Random Acts of Kindness Day to talk about some of our favorite books uh, about kindness and acts of kindness and ways to be kinder to each other. I think we each brought two books, yes. uh, not to talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you bring first, Hannah? Okay, so my first pick for books about kindness is Each Kindness, written by Jacqueline Woodson and illustrated by E.B. Lewis. So this is a story about how a moment of kindness can make a world of difference. This girl, Chloe, turns away the new girl, Maya, when she introduces herself and ignores her when she asks if she can play with Chloe and the girls until Maya eventually leaves. Mm -hmm. And when their teacher gives a lesson about the importance about small acts of kindness, Chloe realizes the mistake she made and that she's not going to get a chance to repair it. Mm. So this book was, is, a, it's a couple years old. Jacqueline Woodson and E.B. Lewis have worked together a lot. They also work together on the other side. So you can see a lot of the similarities in the illustration style. The cover reminds me a lot of the other side, just that soft green. Mm -hmm. The story is, each time I read this book, I have to sit in silence for a few minutes after. Mm. And I really think that's the point of it. It's really hard, I think, to capture melancholy in children's books in a way that children can process and understand, mm. um, especially when it's such a visceral moment. It's the classic moment on the playground when you say, can I play? And they say no. And I know I've been there and it yeah. doesn't feel good. And I've probably also been on the other side of it. And now reading this, it makes me, I, I sort of look back at moments when I was a child and I'm thinking like, oh, could I have been kinder? I think that this story worked very well because it was from the Chloe's. The, she, it wasn't quite bullying, but it was definitely sort of slightness. So it was from her perspective. And you see how minute these interactions are to her, which just makes how much it hurts Maya that much more heart-wrenching. Because also E.B. Lewis does a really good job of illustrating, um, of illustrating facial features mm -hmm. and showing facial expressions. And so you just see this, this girl throughout the story is just entirely dejected and is trying so hard and none of these kids get for the time of day and it hurts so much, but it was so good. And I think it's a really important story and it's important to tell this story because it's important because, so the teacher compares kindness to dropping a pebble in a pond mm -hmm. and how the ripples of kindness, just like the ripples in the pond will ripple out and affect everything else on the surface of the water. And she makes this comparison after Maya has already left. And so Chloe then has this realization that, she's, that she messed it up and she's not going to be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated that choice because while it makes for a very sad ending, it also, feels very real where mm -hmm. you don't always get to go back and make your happy ending sometimes you just have to recognize that you made a mistake and do better in the future and I feel like that's what this story left us with and that's what Chloe came away understanding mm -hmm. I think it really illustrated how you you may never get the chance to come back from a small bit of meanness and that same amount of kindness can take you much farther. So yeah. heavy story, sad story, got a Coretta Scott King honor. So nice representational story checks a good number of boxes. Did you have the hundred dresses as a kid? I did not. I don't know that story. It's an older book. Um, I had it as a kid. That story reminds me a lot of it. Uh, I think some people watching probably still have their copy. Um, the middle grade novel, but it's the same. It's 
kids on the playground who make fun of a girl um, because her, her, she has a very Polish last name and it's hard to pronounce. And so they choose to bully her rather than befriend her. And at the end, they have that playground moment of like, oh, we messed up. And in the end, they actually do end up being able to make it better. But I like what you were saying about how when you close the book, you sit with it because sometimes people don't want to forgive you. Um, they don't need to forgive you because you've hurt them. And sometimes that's the important lesson too, is to just say, it's okay that this person's upset with me because I did make a mistake and all I can do is be better next time, which sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's a hard, and Jacqueline Woodson and Evie Lewis did a good job of making that message accessible to a younger audience. Yeah. Awesome. I'll have to read that one. Yeah. So what was one of your picks? Mine is also a little melancholy. Uh, I like. I think uh, we were looking through picture books, you and I, yesterday, and there's a lot of picture books about kindness that are especially bright and bubbly. But I, we, we both appreciate picture books about kindness that that leave you with that feeling of like, okay, how can I apply this to my own life? So I got a graphic novel, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I actually read in quarantine, which was interesting because the main character, Harriet, this is Sincerely Harriet by Sarah W. Searle. And the main character, Harriet, is actually stuck inside. And you're not quite sure why it's slowly revealed to you. But I can say that the one of the themes of the book is living with chronic illness. It was interesting as someone who's stuck inside, reading about someone else who's stuck inside, much different circumstances. But I was looking up Sarah and she's actually from New England. She has an awesome YouTube channel where she does her art and everything. Harriet is just this wonderful, kind of get to know her just on the first page. She's this wonderful, sensitive, thoughtful person who asks a lot of questions. She's very creative. Um, she's always making up stories about people and that gets her in trouble a couple times just because she's stuck inside and she's stuck there with her imagination of uh, what's the mailman doing? Um, what is my neighbors doing? Like maybe it's some secret society or they're all spies or um, they're doing nefarious things and her parents try to explain to her like maybe you can like channel this creative energy somewhere else because right now just making up stories that's more of spreading rumors where storytelling is really an art form um, that you can work with and the one person that really encourages Harriet is the person she wants least to talk to which is an older woman old enough to be her grandmother who lives in her apartment building her name is Pearl and Pearl is a former librarian, shout out. Uh, she's super nice and very calm and private, um, but she's always trying to be Harriet's friend. And Harriet, um, as a young child, is very, she's not sure about it. She immediately is like, no, we're gonna have nothing in common. Like, this isn't very interesting. She's probably, she's probably doing something diabolical down there and I do not want nothing to do with it. Um, but at the same time, she's incredibly lonely. And Pearl is just always reaching out to her and and asking her questions about herself and her parents are encouraging her to go downstairs. And it turns into this story of intergenerational support. Sometimes the person that you need the most is someone who's outside of your family. Um, sometimes people closest to you can't relate to you no matter how hard they try. Even though they're there to support you, they can't understand what you're going through. When Pearl, who's been through so much more and still remembers how it feels to be Harriet, like stuck inside, incredibly creative, Harriet makes a couple like movie references and, and Pearl just guess them. And Harriet's like, oh, interesting. Um, and so they become really close friends and Pearl becomes the person that um, Harriet can talk to. And it's not a story that's like teaching you to young people to be nice to their elders. It's more about like building relationships with people and chosen family. Mm -hmm. Also so important, especially when you're stuck inside as we have been and like the way your outside world is cut off. And so you really have to reevaluate who, who am I going to stay connected to and who can I stay connected to? This one rather is being kind to people you don't know. It's not judging people you don't know, especially by appearances or especially age. Um, but it's also about being kind to yourself because the whole book Harriet is not giving herself kindness that she needs to give herself in order to be well and be the best version of herself. So that's something she has to learn from other people. I think maybe she could have learned it earlier if she was just a little more kinder to herself. And it also suggests coping mechanisms to the whole book, which again was super helpful. Highly recommend. And it's, it's pretty quick. I read it in a few hours. Yeah. It was one of my favorite graphic novels, I think, of the year. And I know our coworker Ariel 
also had a favorite ga graphic novel. Yes. He will show to you right now. This is Ariel from the Carl Bookshop. I'd like to recommend Act by Kayla Miller. In this graphic novel, middle schooler Olive learns that some students have missed the class trip due to a school policy requiring families pay a fee regardless of financial difficulty. Finding that policy and many others in the school unfair, Olive searches for and partakes in opportunities to enact change. What starts as an instance of sympathy and indignation grows into a movement centered on kindness and fairness. I'd like to share this quote from Olive. If this doesn't work, I'll try something else. I'll just keep trying. This is something we all can do. Act kind, be kind. Kindness can make a change. And back from our commercial break, Thank you so much, Ariel, for participating with us. So my, my first book that I shared was a lot, but it honestly portrays a very important message. So worth the read, but I promise I'll follow it up with something more upbeat. So my next book about kindness is The Uncorker of Ocean Bottles by Michelle Cuevas and illustrated by Aaron Stead. This tells the story of a man who lives by the ocean delivering letters and bottles that wash up with the tide. He loves his job and values the joy that he brings to people by delivering letters from loved ones, but he does hope one day that he'll get a letter addressed to himself. So when he discovers a strange invitation with no name, he spends the whole day solving the mystery and he ends up finding what his heart wanted all along. So this was another story that for me illustrates how just a moment of your life can change someone else's. Mm -hmm. The metaphor I have in my head is like each life is a rolling ball of yarn where these balls of yarn can just roll right past each other in an instant, but then get tangled for the rest of their lives. For this, this very pensive character goes to such extreme lengths in this story to deliver these letters. And yes, it's a job, it's stated. And I know it's a kid's book, so it's way beyond the point, but we never do get wind of a paycheck or a boss. So at some point I gotta just assume that he's doing all of this out of the goodness of his heart. Mm -hmm. I digress. The point <laughs> is when I read this book, I was thinking about how huge of an impact this guy has made on all of these people's lives, which in turn affects him because he recognizes that they have something, physical correspondence, that he doesn't. And by the end, he realizes that this daily task of his offers more than just a purpose, it offers a community. Mm. And I'm still trying to decide whether or not the townspeople had planned the party for him or if it came out of him asking all of the townspeople if they recognized the letter. Um, Cause that was something that seemed a little vague at the ending. And then on the last page, he says, oh, maybe I'll see if I can find the recipient tomorrow. And I really like that because it suggests, does he know that he's the recipient? And is he going to go back to have another community time with his new friends? I hope so. Or is he just going to go back and hang out with his new friends, hoping that maybe he'll find the recipient of the letter? So it's also kind of like a chicken and the egg situation. Did he become friends with these people by looking for it? Or did these people already care about him and he just didn't realize it? Mm. I think I said that wrong. But yeah, I really uh -huh. like this. I also, you may remember from our last video, I really like textures and illustrations. So this was one of my favorite pages just because it's, there's just so little going on in the image, but in just all of like the cloudiness. I like that Aaron Stead did the blue wash over this scene. You really feel what this guy's feeling and just really like in your head, the uncorker of ocean bottles very sweet highly underrated 
Yes. Highly underrated. <laughs> so that was, those were my two favorite books about kindness. What about you, Allie? What was your other favorite? My second favorite book about kindness was Speak Up by Miranda Paul and Ebony Glenn. And this one, I remember I hadn't heard of it. It was part of our anti-racist reading list. And I was looking for books specifically about anti-racist work in the classroom. And uh, Eliza, the manager of the Carl Bookshop, brought this one to my attention. So this one is called Speak Up. It is a picture book. So the best thing about this is that it's specifically ways to be kind in the classroom. We've talked so far about books that are ways to be kind on the playground or at home or with your neighbors, but this one is specifically about being in school and ways for kids to be kind and also ways for kids to be kind to those who are different from them or of different backgrounds than them. So it begins with, there are times we should be quiet, there are days for letting go, but when matters seem important, speak up and let others know. And there's all these different kinds of children and everybody has, you can see everybody has their own clothing, their interests, their own friend groups. Um, they're all in different moods. And every day has, everything has a different option for you to be kind. So not just being nice in general, very specific examples. The third page is if someone's in the classroom and the teacher is mispronouncing their name, try to make it obvious that it's important for the teacher to pronounce their name correctly. It's important for you to pronounce their name correctly. So speak up, say your name, you are you and you belong. The book is, I, my favorite part about the book is that it not only says that children have the power to fix things by calling over a grown up, but also the children have the power themselves without any intervention to address problems in the classroom. So one of the examples is if someone's spreading a rumor, you have the power to not believe that rumor and to stop it in its tracks and say no thank you or not to pass it on to someone else. And then later there's one about it's a group of students in your class is doing something that you don't think is right. So their example is that there's a group of students that are making fun of another student. Um, you don't have to go with the group. You can stop and say, I'm not going to do that and passively say, I'm just not going to do that. But then you can also speak up and change direction. You have the power to redirect the people around you to do something kinder. So this student realized that everyone else was doing something that they may have not realized wasn't the kindest thing for them to do. And, but instead of saying, I'm just not gonna participate or I'm gonna ignore it, they said, hey, why don't we read a book instead? And mm -hmm. then they directed the whole energy of the room and now everyone's together. Redirection is a highly mm -hmm. underrated tool. Yeah. So it just covers all these different situations. The language I think is so important. One page says, when a person wounds another with their words or with their fist, speak up, be an ally, safety comes when we persist. Hmm. And in school that are on purpose or not on purpose, that are physical or emotional, all kids have the power themselves to redirect the energy or get a grown up, there's a part where it get, gets a grown up to help them or just chooses and to help people be kinder. And that's the whole focus is just being kinder because things will happen that aren't right. And the best thing for you to do is speak up and say something about it. So these were my two books, Speak Up and Sincerely Harriet. I like sort of this direction that we're taking where we're thinking about all of the different ways that we can show kindness to the people around us. So I'm going to ask you a question, Allie. And I also hope that all of you watching will think about this as I ask it. So what are three things that you could do today to be kind to the people around you? Hmm. For random acts of kindness day, one thing I could do because most of my communication with my friends and loved ones right now is digitally, I could write just a quick message saying, how are you? Just checking in, miss you. And then I could send it to 10 people, people I haven't talked to in a while, people I talked to in a while, and maybe I haven't asked them how they are because I feel like right now when you ask someone how they are now you kind of already know that it's not great but you want to know anyway just ask and be genuine that you do want to know speaking of the uncorker of ocean bottles that was inspiring me as you were reading it I think just like uh, sending someone a letter 
one of my friends recently sent me a letter for no reason with a bunch of things that weren't important that they could have told me through Facebook Messenger, but they chose to just write it down and send it to me. And it made me really happy. And a third random act of kindness. Hmm. Maybe share one of these books over Zoom with someone else, because I know we share books on Zoom with people all the time and just read to them for fun. If you have any kids in your life, just be like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have plenty of books. I could just call a kid in my life and read a book out loud. That could be really fun. That could be fun. Okay, for Random Acts of Kindness Day, Hannah, what are three random things that you would do to be kinder today? Let's see. I can share, save, and comment on my friends' Instagram posts. I have a lot of friends that are doing small business work and really trying to get them off the ground, and that's something I can do. Another thing that I can do to be kind to the people around me is I can make my housemates tea while I'm making myself tea. Mm. And the last thing is hmm. I like what you said about reaching out to people and asking how they are so I think I'm going to steal that I'm going to reach out to people and say how are you and actually mean it yeah and each little pebble that we drop into that pond will ripple out and bring kindness to the whole world. I'm excited. I might I might make a couple cups of tea myself right now, actually. Because I was going to make one for myself, and I might as well make one for the other people I live with. That could be nice. I like that idea. Me too. <laughs> well, I hope you have a fantastic tea time, Allie. Thank you. You too. The bookstore is open, even if the museum may not be right now. If you're placing orders online, if you have questions or need book recommendations, if you want an art kit to go. If you're just looking for something to do today and you'd like to, like I said, maybe just share a book over Zoom, you can order online and then do curbside pickup. So have your Max of Kindness Day, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching.